The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to your distance learning session in geography for Form 4. I am Changbi Pepetua, your geography teacher. In the last lesson, you had an assignment, and the assignment was to name three hot deserts in the world. Name three hot deserts in the world. Hot deserts. The Sahara Desert, the Namib Desert, the Kalahari Desert, Tar Desert, there are many of them, we were asked to name just three. So Sahara Desert, Namib Desert, Kalahari Desert are some of the hot deserts in the world. Our lesson of the day is titled Tropical Hot Desert Biome. Tropical Hot Desert Biome. Let us look at the overview of the lesson of the day. We will have learning objectives, previous knowledge, real life situation, learning activities, exercise, and assignment. Learning objectives. By the end of this lesson, Learners should locate the tropical hot desert. Describe the interrelationship between climate, soil, and vegetation of the hot desert. Identify the resources in the hot desert biome. At the end of the lesson, the learners should locate the tropical hot desert, describe the interrelationship between climate, soil, vegetation of the hot desert, and identify the resources of the hot desert biome. In our previous lesson, we looked at the tropical monsoon biome. We've also looked at the tropical grassland biome where we identified areas where these biomes are found, identified their climatic characteristics, soil type and their characteristics, the activities carried out in these areas. Let us refresh our memories with some of these questions. Identify the climatic type of the tropical grassland biome. Identify the climatic types of the tropical grassland biome. The climate of the tropical grassland biome is the tropical continental climatic type. The tropical continental climatic type. Name two animals found in the tropical monsoon biome. Name two animals found in the tropical monsoon biome. The animals are the cheetah 
the leopard, tiger, and elephant. Let us describe this situation in real life. You live in a community where rainfall is irregular. The crops and other plants are drying up. You live in a community where rainfall is irregular. The crops and other plants are drying up. Identify the problem in this situation. What is the problem in this situation? You live in a community where rainfall is irregular. The crops and other plants are drying up. What is the problem? What would you do to prevent the drying up of the plants? What would you do to prevent the drying up of the plants? Let us follow the lesson to the end. And at the end of the lesson, we would have answers to the problems of the problem in the situation and how we can overcome the problem or how we can overcome the challenge that is in the situation that we have just described above. The hot desert bio. Where is it found? Where is it located? The hot desert biome is located between latitude 15 to 35 degrees north and south of the equator. It is located between latitude 15 to 35 degrees north and south of the equator. Let us observe this map of the world. This is the equator, the line that divides the earth into two equal halves. A little above the equator, from 15 degrees, right up to about 35 degrees, you will find hot desert. So these areas in color brown are hot deserts in the world. Look at this one is a Sahara desert. The Arabian desert. The Tar desert in India. The Great Australian desert in Australia, the Kalahari and the Namib Desert in South Africa, the Mohave Desert in North America. So these are some of the deserts, hot deserts in the world. The areas where they are found, we've just seen them on the map. The Sahara Desert in North Africa, the Namib and the Kalahari deserts in South Africa, the Great Australian Desert in Australia, the Tar Desert in India, the Mohave Desert in California, and the Arabian Desert. So, if you go to these places in the world, you will find hot deserts. The relationship that exists between the biotic and the abiotic components of the hot desert. Let us begin by looking at the abiotic components of the hot desert. These include climate, soil, the non-living things of the hot desert, climate and soil. What is the main climatic type? The climate of the hot desert biome is a hot, dry, tropical climate. The climate of the hot desert biome is the hot, dry, tropical climate. What are its characteristics? What are the characteristics of the hot, dry, tropical climate? The very first one is that temperatures are high about 32 degrees. Rainfall is low and irregular. Rainfall values low, between 250 millimeters. Irregular, which means the rains don't come 
at the time it is supposed to become or the time it is supposed to come. The rainfall is irregular. It can come today and stay for two, three months without falling. So it is irregular. The climograph of the tropical hot desert. Let us observe this. Look at the temperature graph. Very high in some months. Look at it goes up to about 38 degrees. And then in some other months, it falls right to 10 degrees. So to see that the climate here has a temperature range that is high. Temperature range, the highest temperature of the month minus the lowest temperature of the month. So if we assume that the highest temperature here is 20, 37 degrees and the lowest is 15. From there, you can get the temperature range of the hot desert biome. The soil type of hot desert biome. The type of soil found in the hot desert is the desert soil. These soils are grayish or brownish gray in color. They have a shallow profile. That is, the soils are not deep. And this is as a result of physical weathering. Here, physical weathering dominates, resulting to the formation or the development of soils that are not deep. The soils are grayish in color. Let us observe this. Look at gray soils, almost like ash, ash color, grayish in color, gray brown. Behind you see brownish soils. These soils contain salt. So these are the soils that are found in the hot desert, grayish brown or brownish gray soils. The soils are dry and do not have water. They have very little organic matter in the B horizon. What is common there is the accumulation of salts. The C horizon is partially decomposed. They do not have a clear cut horizon. Here, the movements that take place within the soil is not too active or is not dominant to Distinguish the soil into different soil layers, A, B, and the C layers that make up an ideal soil. They also have a high lime content that can support crops. But the problem is the absence of water. Water is the only medium through which nutrients can be moved from the soil to the plant. But the desert and dry areas, as we've seen on the climate and its characteristics, little or no rainfall, irregular rainfall. So the soils are fertile, but cannot hold crops because of the absence of water. The soils are also saline, they contain salt. Salt is an alkaline, and when it is much in the soil, it renders the soil or the soil quality poor. The biotic components of the hot desert. The components or the living components of the hot desert are the vegetation and the animal life. The vegetation and the animal life. Let us look at the vegetation of the hot desert. The vegetation of the hot desert is the scrub vegetation. Scrub, vegetation that is made up of stunted grass interspersed with open space, very few species of trees. So the vegetation type is made up of scrub or the scrub vegetation. 
What are the characteristics of the scrub vegetation? There are few plants in the desert, scanty with bare surfaces. Let us observe few plants. Look at stunted grass, a heap of grass interspersed with bare surface. Look at bare surfaces almost everywhere. Then you have some shrubs, short trees with very few branches. So look at it. Look at the bare spaces in between the plants. The plants, from, their, from the look of it, it's getting brownish in color to indicate that there is the absence of water for it to continuously grow. The next characteristic is that the plants in the hot desert are drought resistant plants. Plants that can resist dryness. Plants that can survive in dry conditions. These plants are called xerophytes or xerophytic plants. So xerophytes are plants that can sustain dry conditions. Let us observe this. Look at this plant. If you look at the surrounding environment, it's dry. Bare surfaces means there's no water for plants to grow, else these areas would have been covered by grass or by trees. But because of the absence of water, the plants cannot grow. But this one has survived. Look at the tree. It's there. So this tree is capable of resisting dry conditions. That is why it is still standing, or else it would not have grown here. So this plant becomes a drought-resistant plant or a xerophyte. Desert plants have long tap roots to draw water from underground. So, let us observe this. Look at the plant. The limit of this blue line is the soil, and this is a plant on it. Look at how far the roots of the tree. Look at the roots. It has gone right down into the soil or into the rocks of the cross to pick up water in order to survive. So for plants to adapt themselves in hot deserts, they develop long tap roots. The next characteristic is that they have thick stems and fleshy stems to store water. Look at this tree. Look at how it has bulged below. Very large below. It is there for it to store water so that during dry periods it can be using the water that it stored in its stem. This one has a fleshy tissue or a fleshy stem. No leaves, but it is green. It has the ability to store water and make use of it during dry periods. There is little or no, the plants don't have leaves. The essence of them not having leaves is for them to reduce the rate of water loss through transpiration. So the absence of leaves in plants is to reduce the rate at which water is transpired into the atmosphere. If you look at the plants of the hot desert, you realize that they don't have leaves. Look at the cactus plant. It has thorns on it and no leaves. It has, it has a fleshy stem, no leaves, so they can survive in this environment. The animal life, what kind of animals exist in the desert? Very few animals will live or will survive in the desert. The first reason is that there is little or no water. There's an absence of vegetation on which the animals can feed. So just a few animals will survive in this environment. I know if I ask you one of the animals in the hot desert, you will talk of the camel 
Yes, a camel is an animal that survives in the hot desert. It can store many liters of water that can take it for a number of days or even a week. We also have some species of lion. We also have some species of ostrich. See, this is a sand cat. These are some of the examples. A snake. All of them are animals that can live and survive in desert environments. What are the resources found in the hot desert biome? The resources that are found in the hot desert biome. Those things that can be used in order to survive. There is abundant sunshine. How can it be used in order to survive in the desert? We have fertile soils. How can the fertile soils be made use of in order to live or to make life comfortable in the hot desert? We also have minerals. Are these minerals exploited? Let us follow and see what is there as resources, how they have been used. Solar energy is a resource, abundant sunshine. This sunshine can be harnessed to provide electrical energy. And with electrical energy, industries will develop. And that will lead to what? Growth. Mineral exploitation. Crude oil or petroleum is mined in these areas. If we take the countries that are found in the arid zones of Africa, Tunisia, for example, Libya, for instance, they are found in these zones. They are closer or they are found within the semi-arid regions of the world. If you go to those areas, the main activity carried out in these areas will be what? Crude oil extraction. Saudi Arabia, for instance, is one of the countries in the world where petroleum is mined. And if you go back to the map that we showed, you will realize that there is a desert, the Arabian desert. So Saudi Arabia belongs to, those, to that part, and this is the activity that is carried out there, extraction of oil. Farming. Farming do take place in hot deserts. And where do you think farming can be done in hot desert biomes? In which areas of the hot desert biome do you think agriculture can take place? The oasis. Oasis are the wet or the wettest parts of the desert, areas in the desert that have water. In these areas, farming can take place. Let us observe this image. See, this is an oasis. It is different from the environment that we saw ahead or that we saw before. See, trees. In the first one, we saw plants interspersed with open space. But when you come to the oasis, you see trees. These are plants, dead palms. It's one of the, the, the crops grown in the hot desert. So this here, look at how extensive it is. So in the oasis, farming takes place. Another human activity that takes place in the hot desert is tourism. Tourism, people moving about or move about for sightseeing, for leisure, for pleasure. People move into the desert zones for leisure. The landforms in the desert provide attraction to tourists. Let us look at this. If you can go down memory lane, 
when you did desert landforms in Form 3, you were, talk, you were told of a rock pedestal. This is an example of a rock pedestal, a mushroom-shaped structure in the desert. Look at them. This is a pillar. It is formed through the process of abrasion in the hot desert. That's an erosional landform. This landform is fascinating. It's attractive to the eye that you see a landform that looks like a mushroom. It's fascinating. So tourists go there to get themselves relaxed, to feel pleasured, and maybe for studies too. Then this other one, you have also heard of dunes in desert landforms. Look at, this is a bacha. You may have drawn it, but you've not seen it in, as it exists on the ground. See the horns. Then look at this heap. Maybe as a result of an obstacle and wind, prevailing winds bring material and deposit on it, forming what? A bacha, two horns. Look at, somebody can even get into the horns and feel relaxed. That's tourism. When you get there, you feel relaxed. The challenges of the hot desert. What are the challenges? What are the difficulties in hot deserts? Lack of water. Hot and dry conditions. Sandstorms. Low population. Let us go back to the situation that we described at the beginning. In your surrounding, crops are getting withered and drying up. Plants are dying. What is the possible cause of plants getting dried up or withering or dying? The problem is lack of water. So the problem in the situation we described at the beginning of the lesson was inadequate water supply. Absence of water as a result of what? Irregular rainfall or low amounts of rainfall. What should be done in order to remedy this situation? What management strategy can you put in place? That was the second question we asked. Now, in order to solve the problem of inadequate water supply or absence of water, we can channel water into the area. We have mentioned the oasis, areas in the desert with water. Canals can be constructed and water channeled into dry areas in order that plants can be cultivated or crops can grow. So in that way, you are solving the problem that we described in the situation above. Let us end our lesson with these exercises. On the black map of the world provided, locate and name areas of tropical hot deserts. Locate and name areas of tropical hot deserts. We have the Sahara Desert in North Africa, the Kalahari Desert in South Africa, the Namib Desert in South Africa, the Tar Desert in India. The next question, identify the mode of adaptation of plants in the hot desert. Identify the mode of adaptation of plants in the hot desert. Plants are found in the hot desert. What have they done in order to survive the harsh conditions in the desert? That is what we refer to as mode of adaptation. How have they adapted to the environment of the hot desert. They have long tap roots to draw on the ground water. They have thick stems to store water. The plants have little or no leaves to reduce water loss. So these are some of the ways plants in the hot desert have made themselves comfortable in 
the hot desert environment. Assignment. What can be done to increase the population of hot desert environment? What can be done to improve or to increase the population of hot desert environment? We have come to the end of the lesson. See you in the next lesson in which we are going to treat the temperate grassland biome. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia dinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, tam tam amote tam zabike, Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 